And a pleasant good morning. Welcome to Coach's Corner, live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Jordan Bear. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for a little bit of a later start this morning. We had some technical issues uh, over at the station, but we have those fixed now. And we have a doubleheader guest today as we are joined uh, first by Southwestern Boys Tennis, and then we will be joined by Shaw Memorial Volleyball after that. So let's start with Rebel Tennis and Coach Robert Green. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. And, you know, the season this year, let's talk about, you know, last year you had a great team. You only lost, I think, two or three matches all year. You had a dominant one singles player. When you lose players like that, sometimes it's tough to bounce back. So talk about what the transition's been like. Well, it's been a little rough this year. Um, we lost three seniors last year, um, or one singles or two singles, and part of our uh, two doubles who was all conference. Um, so it, it's been a big transition for us. We have four new kids that have never played varsity before. Two kids picked up a racket a month ago. So it's been a uh, big learning curve for them in trying to get them ready for varsity tennis. Well, and, you know, tennis is a sport that, you know, not all kids grow up with. So the ones that have never picked up a uh, ten tennis racket before, how do you coach them exactly? Well, you got to start with basics. Uh, how to swing the racket. I know that sounds silly, but that, that and footwork. Um, footwork's huge in tennis. Um, you cannot have the best fundamentals, but if you can move around and get balls, um, you're going to be a little bit better than the person on the other side of the court. Well, and, you know, I think in tennis is something that once you kind of get the hang of it, does athleticism help you, or is that all of it, or do you have to know some basic fundamentals in tennis? Because a lot of people think, okay, you just move and you hit the ball over the net, that's it. Well, I know a lot of people think that, but it's much, uh, much more complicated than that. Being an athlete does help because if the athletes can move a little bit better on the court. Mm -hmm. um, but once you get to, you know, like I said, with these new kids, they're just learning the basics so we can get them in position to hit a ball. Um, and then you start learning, uh, A, we teach them where we want that ball to go when they hit it. But after that, you start getting a strategy. So, you know, like last year we had, you know, with Coleman Scholar, who seniors played for four years, they understood the game much better than, you know, kids that just pick up a racket sure. this year. And what do you do for the kids that, you know, the ones that just pick up the racket and, you know, when they make mistakes, do you kind of just be positive and encouraging and say, hey, you'll get it, this is your first time? Yes. Uh, always tell kids when they, like I always tell kids that tennis is one of the hardest sports at the very beginning to learn. But one thing I love about tennis more than any other sport is that you can see yourself develop in front of your eyes. I mean, there'll be balls that you can't get to or hit before, but now all of a sudden, now the blue, you can start to, you, you can see that. You can see those balls that, you know, like we, all of our kids knew playing double. So they're starting to hit better uh, balls cross court off serves and off returns so we can get that net play going. But those kids, like I said, one thing I love about tennis is that you can actually see the de development in front of your eyes. And when they hit a shot, you can see them light up. But for new kids, it's tennis. You're going to make possibly 40 to 50 errors a game, even if you're a, you know, one singles, which we have here today, or one singles. He's going to make 40, 50 errors. doesn't mean you're going to lose. you still got a chance to win. Now, that was, you know, the transition, obviously, from last year. Talk about what this season has been like so far, all the matches you've played. Well, we've been inconsistent. That's the best word to sum it up, inconsistent. We have had matches that we could have won, um, but we just let uh, the inconsistency get the best of us. Um, there's been times where our kids will play great for five games, and then all of a sudden they will play terrible for six seven games and that's enough for them to lose mm -hmm. and that's been our big thing you know like last Thursday against Milan we lost 05 but all of our first sets and our singles they played okay um, they just wasn't consistent enough to win that first set now tennis is a sport obviously it can be psychological as any sport can be Milan is a team in your conference so you will see that team in a few weeks whenever the conference tournament is what do you tell your team after that to kind of get that 05 out of their head well, we have them coming up Saturday to conference at Hanover. Um, so, I, first thing is, I, I felt like in the second sets we played terrible. I even told them that. Um, that we've got to stay focused for an entire match. And that starts with staying focused for the first part of it. Yes, you might lose the first set, but it's how you respond is going to be the difference. Um, we, I, I will say this about our kids. We, we are competitive, uh, we are playing hard, and I will say that some of the teams we've played already, we might be one of the best conditioned teams out there. So, we can get stay tough and if you lose the first set and win the second set i think we have a, a distinct advantage in that third set just getting them to play consistency the entire match now your conference it consists of you all mylon christian academy is there any others sure 
Well, it all technically would be in there, but either or not. So it's us, Christian Academy, Milan, and Trinity Lutheran. Trinity Lutheran. Yeah. Okay, and that is next Saturday out at Hanover? Yep, this, yep, next Saturday at Hanover. And, you know, the cool thing about that is, you know, you have an all-day tournament. Is this one of the big goals for you as a coach is to always get that conference title? Because you all won last year, correct? Uh, we won two years ago. Milan beat us in the finals last year, 3-2. Okay. So is that kind of you still in the back of your mind that this is the one you want to get back this year? We would like to, you know, I'll be honest with you, this is our, my fifth year here, and it's the first year Milan won it, we won it two years in a row, and then Milan won it, so it, it seems like it's back and forth between us, you know, we, I like to send my seniors out with another conference title, and even though we lost 05 on Thursday, I think it's a possibility that we can, if we play well, we can beat them, if, if we play them the, in the in the finals, um, we play Trinity Lutheran first, and they play Christian Academy first. And, and now you, that's next Saturday. Then sectionals are going to be coming up in your sectional. Because I mean, as good as a team as you had last year, in your sectional there is a team known as the Greensburg Pirates. Who I don't know when's the last time they lost a, a match before sectional. So talk about what the sectional is exactly. <laughs> well, the sectional is us, James County, Masson, um, and Greensburg. So I think Greensburg's won seven straight. And boys, um, they're tough. Um, last year, uh, we had some kids put up some fights. I actually didn't think we played terrible. It's just they're that much better than us. Um, like I was, you know, we were talking beforehand. It just it, they're just that good in boys tennis. It's really hard to beat them. They're ranked in our little district rankings uh, through the Indiana High School T Tennis Coach Association every year. Um, they just consistently have players that just step up and play. Um, they have great doubles. Their doubles is some probably the best in the area. So. Mm. They're a really talented team, and just you know, with us, Madison, Jeans County, oh, you know, we lost Jeans County three-two. We played Madison this week. Uh, I feel like all three of us are even. It just can anyone step up and beat a team like Greensburg Sectional? Talk about one last thing before we go to break and talk to the kids. When you mention you know Greensburg, one thing that makes Greensburg so good on the boys' side and some of these girls' programs in the area that have been very good is they started feeder programs, junior high. Because to me, I think that's how you build a program is from the young kids up. I, I agree. You know, in the last couple of years, we've actually started middle school boys and girls tennis at Southwestern. And girls tennis, we've had more girls come up. Um, last year, they had two freshmen that started a right away. Um, we have a couple of kids that played middle school last year that play, start and then you know our number one single to Landon which we'll talk later he came from the middle school program and we actually have a good middle school team down there now I think there's five or six eighth graders that start um, so that's gonna be a huge a transition next year when we have those kids come in that have that background and, and the experience playing do you feel that you to, in order to have a successful program you have to have that yes because when you come in as a freshman and never picked up a racket most kids that have even played one year at middle school tennis understand the basic fundamentals so they are already a step ahead of you as a freshman so we're chatting with some of the players that are here with us this morning we'll start with you hello young man hi how are you doing all right how about you not too bad what's your name sir uh, Bailey Elliott hello Bailey so what do you play on tennis what position uh, two singles talk about the season you've had so far for yourself uh, I've done pretty good I've only lost one uh, game so far and I just feel like I'm getting the balls over back Mm -hmm. and just playing my game and it's been working out for me. Um, how long have you been playing tennis? This will be my fourth year. What made you decide to get involved in tennis? Well, Skyler Wynn t uh, texted me one time and for fre my freshman year and said, we need some players, would you like to join? And I said, well, I can't be any worse at it, so I just <laughs> went out there and tried it and decided I liked it, so I stuck with it. You know, and you know, it's got to feel good knowing that that sport is there. And so you've been here for Coach – all the time Coach Green's been here. What has he meant to you in your time playing tennis? Well, he's taught me a lot of things because when I came in, I didn't know anything about tennis. And the more I've worked on it, is better I've came, and he's taught me a lot of things. You uh, also play other sports. What other sports do you play? Uh, baseball. Baseball. Um, you're a senior this year? Yes, sir. Where do you want to go to school? I'm thinking about going to a technical school right now, but I'm not for sure yet. What do you want to do after uh, school? I want to go Weldon. Ooh, okay. They, they, they're, those are in demand right now. So, well, what are your goals for the rest of the season? Or is there any match in particular that you're looking forward to? Any other goal? Oh, well, I definitely want to beat Madison. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then win the conference and try to get back to the championship and sectionals like last year. Absolutely. Well, Bailey, best of luck to you, okay? Thank you. All right, talking with Southwestern Boys Tennis, and we will now chat with the next one. Good morning, young man. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, what, you? Not too bad. What's your name? Landon Dealy. All right, Landon, how long have you played tennis for? Uh, three years. Three years, and you are one singles? Yep. So when you are the one singles, you're 
should I say the big dog, if that's the right word to use there? Do you what do you, <laughs> do you feel any pressure as the one single? Um, yes, because I feel like he's <laughs> the guy that all all the other players look up to. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you need to play as hard as you can all the time. Now you're a sophomore, correct? Yep. Was it any pre any more pressure on you knowing that you're a sophomore as a one single and you have seniors below you? Was it kind of tough to do that? Uh, yeah, in the matches to get the spot because I know just playing Bailey was a challenge in itself because you're playing your friend and you really don't want to beat your friend, but I wanted the spot. Hey, that's what matters at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, and the cool thing is when you are the one singles, everyone else rallies behind you, and everyone else is going to be watching. You have a chance to advance individually also in the state tournament. Talk about your season so far, what you've had, and what your goals are for the rest of the season. Well, it's been a challenge at the beginning of the season because I'm a young one singles player, and I get romped a lot. <laughs> but <laughs> my goal for the rest of the season is just – to have fun and try to win some matches because I have two more years to get better. When you talk about the two more years and what Coach Green's done for you so far and also the seniors that you're with, what have they meant to you in your first two years playing varsity tennis? They've meant a lot to me. They keep me happy all the time because without them I probably wouldn't laugh as much. <laughs> <laughs> Nor would they, apparently, it looks yeah, like. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, and is there any match in particular on your schedule that you're looking forward to? Well, obviously Madison, because that's like, that's just a match. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, Landon, best of luck to you this, this year and your remaining two years, okay? Thank you. All right, one more senior to tell. One more senior to talk to here this morning for Southwestern Tennis. Good morning, young man. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. What's your name? Uh, Riley Elliott. All right, Riley, how long have you played tennis? Uh, four years. Why did you start playing? Same reason as Bailey. Skyler texted us and said we need players. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll see if I can get good at it. When you try a new sport, is it kind of scary, a little petrifying when you try something and then you're actually competing in an actual match for the first time? Yeah, a little bit. It's never even knowing what you're going to do and how you're going to be, mm -hmm. really. What's your position? I play one doubles. Okay, now we've talked with two singles players. Talk about the differences in doubles and singles in the match. There's a lot of differences. you got to rely on your teammate that you're playing with and, and having trying to switch and stuff. It's, it's a lot different than singles so in a sense when you're with a double you know when you're single you can just kind of focus on yourself what you can do better with a double though I feel like you probably have to talk with your teammates some to oh, try yeah. to get everything down yeah you that's one thing that's with my partner we try to work on talking and practice and try to switch and stuff so we can get better for matches and try to win some matches this year now the court in doubles is bigger correct yes does that make it more difficult to play that no, to me, no. It just gives me more area to hit it to and try to keep it away from the other doubles teams. But sometimes it doesn't work that way. When you look at the rest of the season upcoming, what's on your mind? What are your goals for this year? I definitely want to beat Madison and try to get all conference again this year. You know, when you look at the set, when you look at the sectional, would you like to at least have a rematch with Greensburg in the final? Maybe have yeah. another shot at them. Yeah, I would like a shot at them. So hopefully. excellent. Are you going to school anywhere? Yeah, I'm going to try to go to Vincennes University. What do you want to study? Uh, architectural drafting. Oh wow, sharp cookie there. <laughs> All right. Well, best of luck to you. Okay. Thank you. All right, Riley. Thank you very much to him for joining me. We are back now with Coach Robert Green. Before wrapping up this segment, Coach, you got a pretty good group of players there. You know what? I, I will say this: this has been one of the funnest seasons I've ever had. Um, even though we've been inconsistent and haven't been winning a lot, these boys really get along. And as you can see here, they are just. They can't, they can't really see it, you can hear, but they've been laughing this whole morning. They really enjoy each other's company, and honestly, that's some, that makes a coach's job so much easier. Well, and you mentioned that almost, because sometimes, you know, the inconsistencies, when I was a part of teams, whether it be in high school or in college, even when we weren't as good, if I had fun with the team at the end of the day, though, that's what I remember, the memories. So how important is it that a team gets along in addition to wanting to be successful? As a coach, a team getting along is very important to me because it – allows the coach to do so much more if you are trying to put out fires everywhere on the team yep. um, and trying to get them along you take time away from actually getting better on the court um, and focusing all your time on trying to build a team instead of getting them better um, and that's you know one thing that like I said this year I haven't had to do a lot of that they they get along very well with one another they had 
fun fact, they just had a fancy draft on the way to a, you know, a tennis match the other day. So they <laughs> were playing fantasy football together and everything. So that, things like that, it's just really nice to see them do. Hey, that's an important thing to do is a fantasy football draft. Yes. I, had, I did mine last week. <laughs> All right, well, Coach, you look at the rest of the season. What do you want to see from your team? Improvement. Um, you know, we have some matches coming up that I think will be really close matches. Um, you know, next week we have South Dearborn, which uh, they're usually a pretty good team. Um, also, we have Madison, which they've talked about a lot, and then we have conference coming up. And I think every one of those matches are going to be close, and, and I believe whoever team uh, is more consistent in those matches is going to win. I know that's a coach speak there, basic stuff, you know, winning more than the other, but that's where it comes down to consistency. Excellent. Well, Coach, thank you very much for joining me, and best of luck to you the rest of the season, okay? Thank you, too. All right, wrapping up our chat with Southwestern Boys Tennis, we have Shaw Volleyball coming up right after this message. You're listening to Coach's Corner live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop here on Works 96.7. For Shaw Memorial with Coach Tim Torrance. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Jordan. How are you doing, sir? Good, you? Not too bad. Good. Um, the season, you all actually off to a pretty good start, three and four. You've had a couple thrilling victories so far this year. So talk about what you've done so far. Well, it's it's been a it's been an okay start, uh, three and four. Um, we've had a couple of marathon matches, uh, one against Jacksonville, one against Winchland County. We were able to to get victories in both of those. Um, yeah, we went to, to South Central on the road and, and picked up a victory there. So uh, two of our three wins have been on the road, which is which is good. Um, and we've played well at times, and we've played not so well at times. And and you know the girls know that you know when they work together and play well, good things will happen. And when they don't, it'll be a struggle. And some matches have been a struggle. Even the ones we've won, we've had um, segments of games where we've just not played very well. And when they do that, what do you say to them? Because a lot of times, you know, in certain sports, if you get down, you stay down. How do you tell them? Because the two of the matches, you ra you had to rally to win. What did you say to them in those matches? Well, it, and I'll go back to the Jackson Doe match for an example. We we uh, were down in the fifth game, eight nothing, um, and you call timeout and you you bring them over. and And I've got a veteran group of seniors that that handle themselves well on the court. They know what they need to do to to make success, and they just work themselves out um, of a problem. Them and you know, and it's it's one of those things with this group is you get a serve in, you get a point another point and all of a sudden they roll and then we had a, a situation where we were down 12-5 um, in that fifth match and ended up winning 15-12. Uh, so um, we had some good serves. Uh, Kristen Snodgrass came in and, and served well at the end of the fifth match and um, you know and that's what you need and, and the, the Switzerland County match and the fifth match um, you know Kate Grody came in and and served and, and had some excellent serves. So you get those kind of situations where kids step up and and crunch time and it really helps and, and it really propels you to victory you know a lot of people when they think of volleyball they think okay you only you only hit just have to hit the ball over the net that's all you got to do which i guess technically is the point of the game in a sense mm -hmm. but there's so much more to it well there is um we work a lot on on serve receive we've had struggles with that this year where we've we've not uh, handled the other team serve very well um, but we want one good pass to the setter, and, and our setter is Kristen, and, and then one good pass to our, our hitter uh, for a good hit. Um, Kate is one of our main hitters. Um, we also have Grace McAllister that comes in and hits for us as well. Um, so we, we're trying to, to make fundamentals as simple as we can, where we get one good pass and we get one good set, and then hopefully one good hit. And then the end result is where we want it to be, and that's with scoring a point. You are currently one and one in the conference. The game against Switzerland County that you won was a non-conference match. And you look at the rest of the conference. You beat Jacksonville. You fell to Rising Sun. What's the rest of the conference pairing up to be? Well, and, and we're going to meet Switz again uh, in September. Um, at their place for, for a conference game. Um, we also have Southwestern coming up in, in another week or so, that, or a couple weeks that we'll, we'll meet them. Um, they're always pretty tough. Coach Johnson does a nice job. Uh, Ripley will have them at the end of the season. I think they're, they're solid. But, you know, I like our kids' chances in the conference against, against any of the conference opponents. If we go and we play and we do what we need to do and we play our game, 
um, you know, good things will happen. We just don't want to, to rely on the other team making mistakes. We want to be the aggressor. And we want to score our own points. You, you know, what do you say to your team? Because a lot of times, you know, historically for this program, when they go up against a Southwestern or a South Ripley who has some very tall girls on their team, there, there could be intimidation. What do you tell your team heading into those matches? Well, we just have to battle. I don't care who the opponent is or how tall they are. Um, we saw Hauser the other night. They're, they weren't particularly tall, but they were they had good hitters, mm -hmm. um, and they had reloaded this year with some different um, you know, manpower that, that they we hadn't seen before. Right. But you know, you just you have to battle against uh, everybody, and and you know you don't want to be intimidated. You want to you know stick your nose in it and see what happens. And um, you know, we don't want to back down. We don't want to be beat before we walk on the floor. And sometimes that's easy to do. It's a whole lot easier to fail than it is to succeed. When you look ahead to your sectional, where is that held this year? Is that at South Central? Uh, we will be, I think, at West Washington West this year. West Washington yeah. this year. Okay. Look at the teams in that sectional. How do you pair against a lot of those? Well, last year we picked up a sectional win um, when, we, when we went to Edinburgh, and it'll be essentially the same teams. And I, you know, I, I like our chances if we get a good draw. I think we have an opportunity to, to maybe make some noise. You know, we've never won a sectional championship at Shaw, so uh, that would be great for this group of seniors to go out with, uh, you know, with a sectional championship. But it goes back to the same basics. If we go and we play and we play our game, uh, we have a chance. And, and if we go in intimidated, we're going to struggle. You know, you've, this is your third year co coaching volleyball at Shaw. Fourth uh, year. Fourth year. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, sorry, I can't count. Um, <laughs> but it's your second year as, var as varsity head coach. Mm -hmm. So these seniors, are these all seniors here? Mm -hmm. You've seen them from the very beginning. What have you seen from them in your four years? Well, and, and you know, we look at and Kristen and Kate, they're they're four-year players at at, uh, at the high school level. Um, Devin Russell, she's been with us a couple of years. Kelly Hesse's been with us uh, now three years. Um, just to watch them develop each year to get to their senior year, where you kind of come to expect them to go out and take care of business, you know, game in and game out, practice in and practice out. Um, it's been kind of neat watching them sometimes in practice where they try to rally everybody, the underclassmen together. If we're not serve receiving well or we're not serving well or we're not doing something well, they kind of step in and encourage. And um, you rely on your seniors, every coach does, uh, to, to step up and be a leader. And, and you know, these four that are here today, I, I expect nothing less from them. Uh, they come in and they do a good job. And, and I rely on them. We rely on them on the court to take care of business when things don't go well. Uh, sometimes, though, their frustration gets a little bit uh, next sure. to them, and it's, and it's kind of difficult for them to operate sometimes. But uh, they're, they're a great group. I love to be around them, and, and I'm excited to see what the rest of the season holds. Whenever I officiate a soccer game, I always tell the captains, and, you know, before the game, I always say, all right, if you guys can take care of this, it makes my job easier. So if these seniors come in and they, you know, you know, mentor these underclassmen. I guarantee it's going to make your job a ton well, easier. Well, it, it'll it'll make it makes all the coaches' jobs easier when when the seniors come in and, and they they help out and they instruct. And as long as everybody is on the same page, that's that's where things are beneficial. If things aren't on the same page, it gets a little bit um, difficult because you're working against each other. But I think as long as everybody's on the same page, and I feel like for the most part we are, um, you rely on your seniors to take care of things, and and this group will do that. Kate Grody, you're the first step. Hello, Kate. Hi. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. So, fourth year playing volleyball, mm -hmm. fourth year with Tim on the coaching staff in some capacity. Talk about what your four years have been like. Um, I think we've gradually increased in size of the team and definitely talent of the team. So, it, you, you know, I remember, when t I remember when Tim told me how many people came out for the team this year, that's got to make you happy seeing all the participation for volleyball. It does. It's it's great knowing that when we leave, there's still going to be the same talent, the same, you know, want to play. It, what so do you good. say to younger kids that are possibly interested in playing volleyball and maybe they're kind of on the fence about it? Um, please come out. Like, we're a blast to be around, <laughs> you know. Like, we make a lot of jokes. We make practices fun. Um, volleyball is fun in itself, and I think everybody should come out and play. You know, you're three and four to start this this year. You have several other matches, obviously, to go this year. What are some of your goals this year? Um, I definitely want to end our senior season with a winning record and build on our sectional win last year, maybe get two, maybe win the whole thing, you know. We'll just see what happens. You are a multi-sport athlete. What other sports do you play? 
Um, golf, basketball, and tennis. Excellent. Now, you're a senior. What are you looking at for next year for your senior year, after your senior year? Um, I really want to go to the University of Dayton. That's well, where my grandma lives. Oh, and okay. My um, grandpa was the AD there for 13 years, so it's kind of like a legacy. Okay. What do you want to major in at Dayton? I want to be an elementary teacher. Really? Yes. It's a bi that's a big responsibility for that. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, Kate, very much best of luck to you the rest of this year, not only in volleyball, but everything else. And best of luck after graduation. Thank you. All right. Kate Groney, one of the seniors here for Shaw Memorial Volleyball. And we have three others that are joining me here this morning. Kristen Snodgrass, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing quite wonderful. So talk about your time at Shaw and talk about your time playing volleyball. Uh, it's been good. I played since fifth grade with like Kate and Devin and them. So I think we've grown over the years and it's been good. Does that make it more fun knowing that you've been with the same people for so many years? Yeah, you definitely get like a bond with them and it's just really fun playing with them. When you head into your senior year, a lot of times things can be surreal because you're just like, you, you think about, well, what's going to happen after the, year o after the year's over? Do you try not to think about that? Yeah, it's going to be really weird not playing with them and not being with them every single day. So Talk about the year you've had so far. What do you think and what do you have some of your goals for the future of this year? Um, I think we've done really well this year. As long as we keep a positive attitude and keep our energy levels up, I think this team can really compete with any one. <laughs> Do you have any particular goals or any matches that are on your calendar for the remainder of the year? Um, definitely win conference, like a bunch of those games, and compete well in sectional. Mm -hmm. um, and you are a senior. Where are you looking at possibly going to school? Um, I looked at University of Indianapolis. Ooh, good school. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what, what, what do you want to major in? Nursing. Nursing. Okay. Well, Kristen, thank you very much, and best thank of luck. You. Kristen Snodgrass, one of the seniors here this morning, joining me on Coach's Corner again, talking Shaw Volleyball right now. Devin Russell, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing quite wonderful. So you have played volleyball for how long now? Um, actually, last year was my first year in high school. What made you decide to come out? I don't know. I thought it would be something fun to do with my friends. So it, it was. So you've had Tim as a head coach for two years. What's he been like? He's good. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good answer to have. <laughs> but, you know, you've had a fun two years. You had you won a match in sectional last year, and you look ahead. The team is better and better. You've had two very solid comeback wins. You've had a great win on the road at South Central. It's got to make you feel good about the program for the rest of this year. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, what you look at the rest of this year, What's up, what else is on your plate for goal-wise for some of the matches? Um, I think, like what Kristen said, I think our energy level, just keeping that up, being encouraging to everyone else and just improving on ourselves individually. You being a senior, obviously people are going to look up to you, so what do you do to try to make it easier for the underclassmen who are playing volleyball? Um, I would just say, like, be a friend to them and just, like I said, encourage them and just be a teammate. When After this year, obviously, you're going to have to decide college. Where are you heading to college? I'm not sure yet. I'm looking at a lot of Indiana schools. Um, I'm thinking I want to go somewhere in therapy, eventually maybe occupational therapy. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, this year, obviously a lot left to go. What's your message to the rest of the team if they're listening? Um, let's go, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask. All right. Well, Devin, thank you very much. Thank you. That was interesting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelly Hesse, the last senior, joining me this morning. Hello, Kelly. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. How long have you been playing volleyball? Um, so I've been playing since fifth grade. I took a break my freshman year and didn't play freshman year, but then I've been playing sophomore, junior, senior. What made you want to take the break, and why did you decide to jump back into it? Um, j I missed it, <laughs> honestly. Like, freshman year, I just went to most of the games, but I just missed being out there, missed playing. And, you know, you've been with these seniors for so long. How much fun is it to just have this core group of girls? Because you all look like you have a ton of fun together. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have, we have some fun. I've known all of them for years and years and years. So, How, how much better is it when you are on a team that, where everyone just gets along so well? I mean, there are obviously times when we're all going to be frustrated, but we get along really well for the most part. We all kind of just mesh together and it's just, it's a bunch of fun, honestly. When, you know, let's talk about the two matches that I talked to Tim about a minute ago. The Jacksonville match where you were down in the fifth set and then Switzerland County where you were down two sets to one. What were you all saying to each other trying to rally yourselves to come back? It was, that was insane, honestly. It was pretty crazy, but 
we were just like going point by point, trying to take it each step. We couldn't get too far ahead of our, too far ahead of ourselves or anything. We just had to take it like one step at a time and keep working to go. You look at the rest of this season, obviously, you know, conference wins, you know, doing well in the sectional. What are some of your goals for this year? Um, just like what Kate said earlier was like a winning record is always definitely a team's goal. And I think our conference, we have a pretty good chance of winning a couple more of those games. So Excellent. here's hoping to that. Oh, so now where are you heading to school next year? Um, I'm looking at IUPUI and Bellarmine mostly. Ooh, okay. Yeah. What, so. do you, what do you want to major in? So I'm toying between two. I'm either thinking radiation therapy or going into English, which are two kind of opposites opposite. there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Kelly, thank you very much for joining thank me, you. and best of luck in your future. Thank you. All right. A pretty good your group of seniors there, Tim, and uh, they all seem to have fun. Yeah, they, they do. They, they have sometimes too much fun, um, <laughs> but I would rather it be that way than, than the other way. And, sure. um, you know, each one brings a little something different to the table. You know, Kristen is our setter. She, she has her own style. She's kind of quiet, but now the last couple of years she's learned to open up a little bit she's been a little bit more uh, vocal which is good at times um, <laughs> um, Kate is is Kate she is very athletic she's very aggressive uh, sometimes she's her own worst enemy uh, you know Devin uh, she comes in and does a nice job she she does a lot of good back row uh, passing she can hit uh, and then Kelly you know, she's one of those that you know she's you always hear she's always encouraging um, she's one of our back row players that that takes care of business back there and uh, you know Sammy Legiza and Maria Rios she's those are a couple of more of our seniors. We have six all together. Um, Grace McAllister and Haley Thayer are two juniors. Uh, Phoebe Grody, Abigail Hill, and Presley Coots are our sophomores. And then uh, Lena Leatherman, Natalie Stewart, and Marilee Perez are our freshmen. That makes up our 14. But uh, we've got, we got a great group, and they're fun to be around. You mentioned encouraging. To me, at, you know, in, spor in sports, I know when I was in school, it was tough at times to be encouraging mm -hmm. when you had a teammate screw up because you just wanted to scream at them. Right. But how important is it is encouragement? Well, yeah. And you and there's a fine line there that you have to learn and understand. And you know you've played sports and I've played sports and these kids play sports. And you you know it, it's one thing to have your coach yelling at you for making a mistake. You don't have to have teammates doing the same thing. So you get stereo from all sides. So you you've got to use a little bit of class when you do that. And it's the same for us coaches. You know I don't stand along the sidelines and scream at them. It's you know we we try to treat each other with respect and we try to accomplish something the best way to accomplish something is not to stand and scream and criticize you know no matter what sport whether you know it'd be soccer when i've officiated games before i've seen it to where you know i see the same teammates all yelling at each other and getting on each other and they don't work as well as some of these other teams who are just like hey we got this and they're being encouraging it, it, there yeah. is a difference there is a difference and and fortunately i can't hear everything that's said on the floor on the <laughs> sidelines which is probably a good thing i think so, they all agree so <laughs> um and and that's okay but as long as they and i like for them to work out their issues on the floor during a match hey this is what we need to do this is how we need to do it this is where you need to be at um because the more they do that uh, I mean I could call 20 timeouts a match if 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 I tell them the same thing every time and they go out and do something different it's not going to do us any good so I want them to be pretty much self-sufficient on the floor you look at the rest of the year what what do you hope for this team the rest of the year well I just want us to be more consistent I mean we've got a long way to go we, we need to improve our serving we need to improve our passing our, our hitting needs to improve I mean we need to improve in in every facet of the game but we've made progress. We just need to make a lot more. We need to make sure when we walk out on the floor, we, we feel like we have a chance to win. Or if we can't win, we at least need to compete. We don't want to go out and give up. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times I think I've seen teams that – they're beaten before they walk on the floor and and you know that's that can't happen and especially in this game with you know the different facets of the game and the things you need to do well and the some things that you can get by with not doing well um you know and i like this team's chances because we've got some really good athletes and sometimes that athleticism will uh it'll it'll help you overcome a little bit of skill deficit so hopefully we can do that excellent well tim anything else you want to say before we step away here no it's been a it's been a fun four years at shaw coaching volleyball a couple years at jv and now a couple years at varsity i've had a great time and, and again these seniors are, are special all six of them um they're they're a challenge in their own mind sometimes so uh but they're a lot of fun and and a couple of them i'll get to see 
um, during the softball season and this in the spring. But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to keep forging ahead in volleyball, try, keep trying to get better, and and hopefully win some more matches and be competitive in the conference. Last year we were three and three in the ORVC, and you know we'd like to at least uh, match or or even beat that again this year. So uh, you know it's it's always a fun challenge, and and uh, like the kids said, they're having fun, and and that's the main thing. Excellent. Well, Tim, thank you very much for coming in this morning, and best of luck. Thanks for hosting. My pleasure. Tim Torrance and Shaw Volleyball joining me this morning. Big thanks to Tyson Torrance back at the studio. Obviously, we had some difficulties, some technical issues at the beginning of the hour, but we appreciate him uh, getting those fixed back at the station uh, so we can get on the air. We will talk again next week live from Coach's Corner here, on McD- here at McDonald's on Works 96.7.